Good evening and welcome to Talking Songs with me, Roland Jones. Um, you see, we're at a different angle tonight. Is, is that a bit more jaunty, do you think? I'm not sure. It's the fact I've, I've acquired some, I've acquired a new instrument. Yeah, I've got a, a large organ. Yeah. Um, this is, um, yeah, so I have to move everything around and um, it's been chaotic. I remember the days we could buy a musical instrument and switch it on and it worked. And it does that, but then you try and connect it to something else and you realise you have to have a, ver a verification activation code, which sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. And then after about 17 phone calls and 18 emails, you get to a certain point where you realise that you're actually further back than you were two hours before. So, um, but on the other hand, it's all good fun. It's all good fun. So... Um, that's been my, uh, that's been my, oh, you've got a little bit of flare coming off the window there. If I can just move that around a little bit so I can, that's better. So it's not flaring quite so much. Um, what else have I got to report? Well, gigs are starting to come back in, which is good. I think they, I think they're coming back into fashion. So um, hopefully all you musicians out there are, are starting to get a, a few dates in your diary. Um, so it's time to get the fingers working again, which is, um, most people I spoke to have said they're finding it a little bit difficult, which is fair enough too as well. If you don't use them, you lose them. So um, there's a new song, this one, um, which I finished um, yesterday afternoon, um, I think. And um, yes, yeah, so I thought I've abashed it. So I might I might glance at the, at the lyrics every now and then because it's not quite it's not quite firmly in my mind. And this is called um, Always Thought. I knew you might fly to New York City Or go walking in the mountains of Peru I knew you wanted to visit a thousand different places But I always thought that you'd be true I thought you might have gone and sailed around the world Or to make your fortune And that'd be fine I knew you wanted to do a million different things, but I always thought you'd still be mine. You never know what's round the corner. You never know which way the wind will blow. We never know the future, and that's the thing. We never know which way the dice will roll. I never thought you'd run off with a sailor, or disappear with a smooth millionaire. I never thought you ever want to leave me I always thought you'd always be there you never know what's round the corner you never know which way the wind will blow we never know the future and that's the thing, we never know which way the dice will roll. And I always thought that we would be together, together till the end of time. Yes, I always thought that we were forever. I always thought you'd still be mine. 
You never know what's round the corner. You never know which way the wind will blow. We never know the future. And that's the thing. We never know which way the dice will roll. We always thought. I always thought. We always knew. That's um. That's it for me now. So now handing us, handing, handing control over to the rest of the world. Good evening. Mr. John Jenkins and Pippa Murdy. Is it Murdy or is it Murdy? Murdy. Murdy. <laughs> it's Murdy. Um, evening, Roland. <laughs> Good evening, guys. How are we doing? Fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. 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 yeah where, fine. where, where, where are you by the? We're in the front room. Yes, I know we're in the. Where's the front <laughs> room, you fool? <laughs> it's from the kitchen. <laughs> I thought that I forgot that this guy was wrong. Sorry. Um, <laughs> where, in, I, well, I, well, I live in Mel's. This is in Mel's, which is on the Whittle. Right. I'm from Liverpool. Um, oh, Pippa nice. lives. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pippa, you live in West Kirby, don't you know? Yeah. Which is, down the road. Yeah, down the road. Right. Um, but she's not from West Kirby. So. <laughs> Liechtenstein, is it? Or? <laughs> Close. <It's> Switzerland. <laughs> Somewhere exotic. Oh, Oxford. 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 Okay. She's Oxford. Posh. Oh, posh. Posh. Yeah. Posh. That, right? Posh. 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 Yeah. So, John, <laughs> when did it all start for you? Tell us a little bit about your background in music. Where did it all happen? Oh, blimey, yeah, Roland. I could, I've, I've, I've got an hour, have we? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, for me, um, I mean, my family have always been musical, not mm. like professional music. Mm. But you know, there's a history of of uh, my parents and uncles and aunties going to you know pubs on the Dock Road in Liverpool and singing and mm. stuff like that. Yeah. And um, when I was growing up, um, I lived with my mum and dad, my two sisters, and we we dad's mum, and we had a piano in the um, in the parlour. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if people have parlours anymore. Yeah. Um, we 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 always had a piano as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, my dad used to have a bit of a tinkle. Yeah. Um, and then he'd come downstairs and play the piano. And then he'd come down and play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's real amount, John. It'll be fine. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, so from there, I just sort of um, I had a great love of music, you know. So mm. I, I ended up sort of picking out chords on a piano, and then mm. I played things like Let It Be and Hey Jude by the Beatles, because mm. I was a big Beatle fan. And I started writing my own songs, and that was the mm. end of the 70s. Yeah. Um and then I um I had a guitar as well. So um I just in the eighties I, I I tried to join a band. Well mm. I tried to join, I did join a band as a keyboard player, a, a local band called Come in Tokyo, mm. who um was led by um Pete Wiley's brother, Phil Wiley. Oh right. Pete Wiley's the, the Mighty War mm. or yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of hits. So um we were like dubbed Son of War. Um but we got like a lot of radio sessions and stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, in the eighties, really, that's what it started yeah. for me. But then, I got a guy into the band who played guitar, a friend of mine, John Gillen, and um, because we we wrote stuff and mm. Phil wrote all the songs of that particular band, mm. I wanted to form a band for our songs, my yeah. songs and his songs. So we had a band called the Persuaders in the in the eighties, mm. which went up to about nineteen eighty nine. So mm. there's loads of stories about that. And then I came out of music in 19... I just had enough of it by then. Um, <laughs> and I got back into it in 2015. Yeah. So there's about 36 years, isn't it? Like <laughs> Something like that, you know, between. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I've had that conversation with several people on this who sort of, you yeah, know, I remember you had, had, had a break yeah. from it. Um, but then come back to it with sort of a renewed vigour and like yeah. a determination. And, and suddenly, you know, bang, bang, bang. With one, one person I had on called Trudy... Um, who has been, um, I mean, she was involved in theatre and stuff when she was at university and was a drama teacher. Yeah, listen to Trudy, yeah. Like, Did you hear it, yeah? And, yeah, you know, she's now, now she, she's writing a song a day. She's writing several songs a day. <laughs> she has that to see several now, is she? Yeah, well, I, I, um, I was fortunate enough to um, get sent um, a couple of songs from her. And I oh, also right. um, 
I'm fortunate enough to sort of come across as and think how, how wonderful she was. Mm. So she's going to send me a CD. She said that she recorded 22 songs in one in, day in the studio. In one day in the studio. <laughs> and she's put 11 out on a, on a, on a, um, as an album, which is yeah. just had pressed up. And she's going back in the studio next week to, re- to do the second album. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it'll be like two there's, weeks there's, album, you know. There's no difficult second album for Trudy, is there? No. no. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Amazing. She said well, it's an ex- extraordinary voice. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I sort of didn't come back into music with the intention of coming back into music. What happened mm. for me was I, um, I still wrote... Um, mm. And I was still sort of, um, you know, t- t- talking about my days in the eighties and stuff like that. And one of my mates' as mate, a mate of a mate, mm. is an artist, and he mm. went to this place in Liverpool called the View Two Gallery, which is um, it's no longer there now. It only mm. went a couple of years ago, but it was in Matthew Street where the cavern yeah. is or was. Was and um, what basically Liverpool Acoustic, which is a a, a, a local um, yeah you know website mm-hmm. they do um a songwriting challenge every year which i didn't know nothing about mm. so i got i got a message saying you know there's a songwriting competition challenge mm. um you know and they want you to write a song about a painting so i, I got it the message on the friday went down mm. and made the time went to the the gallery mm. so um hello <laughs> hello <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the um, so the, so the photograph thought of a song straight away from one mm. uh, one painting, wrote it more or less on the way back to work, mm. um, and I normally get people in to sing my songs or mm. to play the, the music on them mm. um, at that time, and um, I didn't have enough time to do that, so I just recorded it over the weekend, sent it off, completely forgot about it, and then I got an email saying you're in the final in November, brilliant, um, That's and you've got. Um, and you've got to record it and you've got to sing it and perform it in front of a live audience. So uh, when I got up there, I said, you know, I haven't played live for like 30 odd years. <laughs> and even then I was never the singer. Yeah. So um, I won, okay, I was joint winner, um, <laughs> which meant that I won studio time. Right. Which meant that I went in to record the song and I didn't sound as bad as I thought I would. Um <laughs> So I had this song with me singing, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to have another go. I'm going to do another one. Yeah. And another one. And another one. So about 120 songs later, I'm, um, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so you're competing with Trudy now, are you? <laughs> well, I think Trudy's just uh, wonderful, you know. I mean, you know. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah. If, in case you're wondering, what, <laughs> Leslie, what, what happens is after Leslie's shared all the, to everybody, she has my phone downstairs, and she does it on my phone because that's got more groups on it and then she always brings it in here in case anything goes wrong with this so i can check it but what oh, she hadn't realized was i'd moved it because normally the computer's been here so she comes in and puts it down and nobody sees it so she probably didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah in case you're wondering whether there were people wandering around the house at random yeah. at any i thought time. it was a squatter <laughs> 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 uh, all right let's have a song john what we're we gonna okay. do Right, well, I've got an album coming out on the um, on Friday, believe it or not. So, well, I'll, have you? Yeah. It's a good yeah. chance to talk about it. So, yeah, one of the songs on the album is a song called "The Last Train from Baltimore." Right. Um, it's not a happy song, unfortunately. Um, not that I write any happy songs. Um, Most of us don't. So, yeah, I mean, I like writing story songs. So, this yeah. is um, I, I've I've got a friend, Mike Mike Mulligan, who's um, whose elder sister son got killed on a railway line when he was a teenager oh, and um, you know obviously that was it was a really sort of sad time for everyone involved you know it still, probably still is you know I imagine mm. it's never going to go away but I always mm. think about the train drivers and um, mm. what they have to you know how, how, how do they feel about it you know, yeah. you know do they feel the guilt and do yeah. they sleep at night and stuff like that so mm. this was just um, about a, a Baltimore train driver called the last train from Baltimore mm. okay I'll just um, plug this in. Okay. You ready? The train 
pulls out the station. I leave the platform once more. My name is Thomas Wilson. I used to drive these trains from Baltimore. And I sit and I stare and I wonder on that fateful night could have something more. Young kids playing on a railway line. That's what young kids do, I was told. Don't pull away from me. Hold me as I sleep, as that moment plays itself out once more. Why did it have to be? And the fate tell me the guy who drove the last train from Baltimore. Trampled by those memories Like water cushion from a river strong Papers asked if I fell asleep A good story is a good story Who cares if it's wrong Don't pull away from me Hold me as I sleep, as that moment plays itself out once more. Why did it have to be the hand that fate dealt me, the guy who drove the last train from Baltimore? Yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, it's good. Good song. I like the idea of it. The, the, um, I saw something in, uh, or must have been on your website about um, about Chris Difford. Um, did you support? Yeah, I, I played um, Thornton Hoff Village Club. I was supporting them on. Yeah, right. Because yeah. that, that I, that's also it. It, it that's why it rang a bell because it was that sort of, that sort of storytelling thing is very much his yeah. bag, isn't it? Yeah, he's amazing, really. You yeah. know. Um, he's, you know, I've sp spoken to him a few times now. I've yeah. gone a, I went to a songwriting retreat yeah. um, last year, yeah, not last year, yeah, the year before last, yeah. um, and I've done one this year online because obviously lockdown. Yeah. Um, and he's a lovely bloke, and he's, mm. he's got a lot of, co you know, he does a lot of causes as well, a lot of charity stuff. Yeah. Um, and also, I met the first time I met him. I, um, I, the Americana UK. I had right. to play one of my songs in in, um, in front of. Um, him, mm. uh, Beth Nielsen Chapman, um, Mary Gulthier, and Sam Baker. All so right. I played the song called Sweet Delphine. And um, I got really nice feedback. The idea was to give you feedback. Yeah. And um, he, he, is, he said, um, you know, think of when you're writing songs, mm. you know, think of less um, less common words. That's the way we put it. Think of, mm. you know, more words that, are sort of, that, are, that aren't used that much. Hmm. And then I sent a song to the Nashville um, Songwriters Association, and the feedback I got was use more common words. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah, like I think you've got British versus American there, haven't you? Yeah. So it was like, oh, you know, um, you know, when you're going for advice, sometimes you just have to, you know, um, take it with a pinch of salt. Well, but, I, yeah. I think it's 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 it is very much like you know, where have, have you ever been to Nashville? No, no. Right. Well, we, we played. We, went, we played we went, the Bluebird uh, Cafe, haven't we? Yeah. Um, well, we we went there a couple of years ago, and right. um, the, it's 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 bizarre because, as I said to Leslie when we got there, I said people wear cowboy hats here with no sense of irony. You know, that's how they are. You know, yeah. and they have the pickup trucks with the shotguns in the back, and they wear yeah. that. You know, that, and and they all say yeehaw and all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah. But it's like, you know, that's not necessarily going to work. For for us in the UK, 
Yeah. Although yeah. although we have a huge amount of American influences in, in what we do, there's no doubt about that. I think it's. Uh, I think what 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 Chris Difford was saying is um, is quite appropriate for for a British market because I think um, dare I say it the 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 use of language. I mean, country music, of course, is a is a is a huge thing, um, massive market in itself. But um, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd stick with what feels right for you anyway in the, in the end of the day. I mean, yeah. It's just interesting hearing what people yeah. say about certain songs. You know, I mean, it wasn't the same song, so I, I, you know, maybe it's not a, the best example. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it's interesting what people will, will say about your songs if, if you ask them yeah. um, what, you know, if you ask them for feedback, what they come back with, you know, sometimes. Mm. Um, and sometimes... The, you think, oh yeah, that's really good, and then sometimes you think, what the hell are you talking about? You know, <laughs> um, you know. Well, the, 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 what, one of my big things about this is that people use the same things to describe what they like and what they don't like. Yeah. People say, I don't like that band; they all sound the same. And they say, I really like that band because they've got a sound of their own. And you can always tell yeah. it's them. Well, hang on, that's the same description, but one is positive and the other is negative. You know, yeah. so we. Are, I, yeah. think I mean, positive. people are. You know, it, it. The thing about music is is. Um, you know, it's subjective, isn't it? Really, totally. you know, and um, and that's a good thing because if everyone hates it, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd give up, wouldn't you? Got up, you, you know. would. <laughs> <laughs> so, who, who, who are you? Who who would you? Obviously, Beatles fan, um, but who who would you like as writers? Who any anybody else that sort of springs to mind? Me, I am. Um, oh, right. Well. I, I love songs more than sort of artists. Yeah, that's fair it's, enough. Yeah, you know, I um, I've always said, you know, um, I mean, I've got favourite bands because mm. obviously there's a lot of bands that have, you know, continuous amazing songs yeah. like the Beatles, for example. Mm. That's one. Bruce Springsteen's another one. Mm. Um, you know, Bert Bacharach and Hal mm. David, yeah. um, you know, Brian Wilson. But I just love songs, really. You know, so you know, like I've, I just read a book about. Um, Richard Ket, um, Richard Ket Landsman, you know the um, the Glen Campbell song written by Jimmy Webb. Oh right, yeah, 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 That's yeah. One of my favourite songs. Yeah. Um, but of late, I've really got into people like Towns Van Zant and right. Brian and Nancy yeah. Griffiths and Mary Shaden yeah. Carpenter, mm. um, Iris Dement, um, mm. a lot of the sort of. I think that a lot of them are Texas actually, rather than yeah. Nashville yeah. songwriters. But I, I um, but they all end up in Nashville somehow, or other. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's all sorts of parts of that melting pot, really, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of them from Austin, Texas. Guy, Guy Clark is another one, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, but that's what I've been listening to a lot. And th the thing, funny thing about it is, you know, when they were at the prime, probably mm. I hadn't heard them or I hadn't heard the music. I, I was probably listening to Yes or um, <laughs> Pink Floyd, you know. <laughs> so. There you go. Yeah. yeah. No, is it interesting? Is it, we were talking you know, briefly saying before about the difference, you know, you know, the, the, the American, um, American taste and British taste. I mean, the Wichita linesman. I mean, if if it was the um, um, the Yorkshire GPO engineer, it doesn't sound quite the same, does it? Because that's no, basically no. what that's, that's what he is. But there's always that thing about like um, what sounds exotic. You know, like um, Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass, for example. Yeah. Um, I'm, I remember when I first heard that when I was a kid, I was thinking, it's Tijuana, wow, that sounds really exotic. But at the time, it was the pits. It was just, you know, it was violent. It was it was drug-ridden. It was like horrendous place. And he, yeah. and he called it that because he was taking the mick, basically. Yeah. And... Um, and and somebody once said to me about about Chattanooga, which features in a lot of you know sort of forties type songs, and and I, I said, "What's it like?" And he said, "It's like crew." <laughs> and so you know, there's it, always that thing that you know the other side of the pond, pond sounds more more exotic. Sometimes. Well, again, yeah, because I mean that that last song we just played, the, mm. the last train from Baltimore. Yeah. You know, if a if it, if it was the last train from Croydon, it just um, it wouldn't work. Would it? it wouldn't work, you know. Or the last train from from Grimsby, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like you use the term. You might find yourself saying Cadillac or Ford, but you wouldn't find yourself saying Vauxhall or Cortina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Shall we have another song? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll do one from the last album. Um, okay. A song called Daniel White because it's a um, you know it's a story song and. Um, yeah. 
basically the, the idea behind this one was I um I still work, I've got like a part-time job. Mm. Uh, I do three days a week. And a couple of years ago, I was in the office. I'd just been moved to another team mm. um as a manager. Mm. And I'm 62, so I must have been in my 50s then. Mm. But even then, they were like in their early 20s, and they were talking about going out to town, and it was around mm. about Christmas, and all the things they were going to do. And I was thinking, they're thinking, you know, I used to do that, you know. <laughs> I've done that, I've done that. And then I kind of thought, I wonder if they realise I'd done all these things, you know, when mm. I was their age. Mm. And then I thought back to when I was their age, mm. and I was in the office probably saying that to other people of my age. Mm. Uh, did I actually think about people 30 years older than, than me at the time? Mm. Like the day, what what they had done when they were young. So mm. the idea really is, is when you look at, I mean, when you look at someone that's older, <laughs> you know, you, you don't know the backstory, you know what I mean? You don't no. know whether, what, what they've done in their life and stuff like that, you know? So, um, as somebody, as somebody famous once said, every generation thinks it invented sex. And which boils, <laughs> boils, down, boils down to the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. what's this? What's this called? What it's it called, called Daniel White. Daniel White. Okay. Yeah, That's it's it. a. Um, it's no one I've ever met. To be honest, right? I need to put something in, don't I? I you need realize. to plug something in. I think. Yeah. Okay. Hope to take a second. This is just a technical thing for the people out there. Right. You ready? Right. Oh, you've got a uh, mandolin there, haven't you? <laughs> Daniel White looks out his window Daniel White walks out his door You never got to know his neighbours' names but he suspected just like him, they were poor. The years have weighed heavy on him. He spends most days alone in his room. The furrow of his brow gives him seven up, and his single bed is no larger than a tree. And if only people could see the man he used to be. Brand new suits, he once walked so tall. I guess time can make a change to his own. Daniel White once had a family Daniel White fought in the war You want a medal for bravery But there's no one to talk about that anymore And if only people could see the man Daniel used to be. The children they all left and names they call. I guess time can make a change to us all. Yes, I guess time can make a change to us all. Yes, I guess time can make a change. To us all. Nice, Daniel White. Yes, I noticed that your songs are really compact. They're very sort of um, dense. Is a story. It's, it's it, and it's. They, I like I like the structure of them in that sense. You know what I mean? They're not. Yeah. They're, they're not rambling stories. You, you you've got something quite clear in your mind. I've got right. loads of rambling stories. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you do this when you're chatting, not when you're singing. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, I mean, with these sort of things, does it start from like a, a phrase? Have you got like a phrase in mind that you think, well, have you just got the name? 
Um, in that instance. No, I, I, it, to be fair, that the main way I write is now I, I um, pick a guitar up and I'll just strum mm. some chords mm. and I'll busk, I'll um, you know sing anything mm. and then sort of record it mm. and then sort of listen back to it and sometimes the what you you don't know what you're singing might mm. be a direction you're going. Yeah. Um, so I generally write the music first in terms of the melody line. You're right. Okay. And it might take ages before I come up with like the words I want to do or the story. Sometimes it just clicks. Mm. Sometimes it, it it doesn't. Um, it can take ages. I've got a lot of songs that I'm still trying to get my head around. You know. Mm. Um, you know, a, a lot of the songs I write, um, especially of of late, because mm. I'm, I used to write the band I was in. That mm. I wrote for was an 11-piece band, so we had the horn section. Oh wow! Um, and I had two singers, um, so I wrote f- with them in mind. So I wrote a lot of duets um, for them to sing, play right. off each other, mm. and I kind of wrote, you know, different kinds of varied kinds of songs. I'd write soul, soul songs or bluesy mm. songs or or whatever, you know. Um, so the last couple of years, I've, I've mainly been writing for myself, you know. So. Mm. You know, and I've got a band as well, um, but it's very difficult, as people will probably know, getting people together. You know, to sort of, um, mm-hmm. to, well, with with uh, with COVID, it's impossible really. But yeah. it's been, it can be very difficult even when there wasn't COVID, because mm-hmm. people of of a certain age, I've got mm-hmm. families and grandkids yeah. and stuff like that going on yeah. in the line. So yeah. you know, we're not like we're we're nineteen or twenty again. So. Um, a lot of the songs I've been writing are, are with the purpose of sort of playing on open mics or or just mm. gigs. Um, and Pippa came along in the last eighteen months, is it? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, she's um, been sort of here playing mm-hmm. mandolin, guitar, and uh, kazoo. How did you? How did you get together, you two? How um, did how did it, you know, you say something. I was a mutual friend, Eileen, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Grabbed John at his birthday party. <laughs> it was a musician, you know, yeah. they go talk All to right. each other. So, yeah, I've got her to thank for it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know John's thanking him. <laughs> yeah, she, um, yeah, I, I met her a few times. We have, there's a, a regular sort of folk club um, in Liverpool called mm. Core Market. And, mm. um, I, you know, I met Eileen first and then Pippa had come along a few times. So I got to know her there. Um, and I was just sort of, uh, yes, you're right. I got you got thrust upon me. Um, <laughs> 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 um Pip plays this, please play that. So we give it a go. Um, but we had a band, but my band, we had a couple of girls in the band who, um, mm. Megan Louise, mm. who is an amazing singer. She's only uh, at the time. <laughs> dear, dear, I say, I've done a duet with her. She was only 14, you know. Um, oh. and it was really sick because I couldn't look at her and I was like, um, you know, singing this love song. Um, so you know, that was a bit weird, but like she's she's 18 now, so if she ever wants to sing with me, I can look at her now, you know. Um, and um, and it's another it's girl, a fam- it's a family show, John, family show, yeah. Sarah Jones, um, who was a wonderful singer, songwriter mm-hmm. as well. Um, and I've had backing singers who have got. You know, I've been blessed with mm. a lot of people that want, have fortunately wanted to work with me, you know. Mm. But a few of them have been session people you've got to pay. Mm. And, um, you know, Pip is cheap. I was going to say, <laughs> she's free. She... <laughs> <laughs> she brings her own beer here, you know what I mean? <laughs> what more can you want? <laughs> yeah. It's the handyman joke, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> From the corner. Um, <laughs> so the, you, you've got this new album coming out. Do you, with them, um, when you're recording, do you uh, do you have a sort of theme to it, or are they they all unrelated stories, or in the songs? It's a good question. Um, as I said, the, uh, you okay. know, the last album, um, I particularly wanted to write songs. I was going to call it songs uh, for the open mic mm. um, because I really wanted to write some intimate songs where mm. I didn't have to rely on, on the band because it, it did get a bit frustrating at one point because what would happen is I'd try and organise gigs mm. and it's not their fault. I'm not blaming anyone. It's just mm. life. But you'd sort of send five emails to five different people mm. and you get four replies. Mm. 
and the fifth person wouldn't reply. Mm. And then you sort of chase them up and the, the fifth person couldn't make it. So you go back and get another date yeah. and then he'd reply first, but someone else wouldn't reply. <laughs> so it was like, you know, it, it was, I'm just getting, oh, you know what? I need to do something where I'm, I can just sort of do mm. myself. So um, as well, right. Yeah. Um, so the, the last album was, was like that. And um, it's that was more intimate. This mm. new album, I had a few songs sort of the same similar style, but there's a couple of songs on there which are band songs. There's one song mm. called Desert Hearts, which is um is about six and a half minutes long and it's mm. got like um, it's got a full strings on it, full yeah. horns. Yeah, I listened um, to that this morning. Yeah, it's got like mm. three duos on it. Mm. <laughs> um it's over the top, I've got to say. Uh, <laughs> But um, so yeah, it's completely. There's, it's got a mixture of of um, mm. of sort of you know just strip back stuff against mm. you know things that are a bit sort of um, you know more bandy stuff as well. Mm. Yeah. I think one of the things with songs, that, from my standpoint, is that that if a song is a, is a decent song, a strong song can exist. I mean, that's why with all these 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 programs I've done, they've all been, you know, somebody sat with a, with an acoustic guitar or, or maybe a piano yeah. just performing, with the exception of the rappers, of course. Um, yeah. And I think that when, if you've got a song that is, is well-structured and hangs together and the story's there and the lyrics are right and everything else, you, you can build it into something else. Yeah. If you want to. You don't necessarily have oh, totally to. I totally agree, yeah. Um, yeah. But but as you say, the practicalities of of running bands, I think, is is harder now than ever, especially of, of a certain age group. Yeah. I mean, I I I've, I've got an occasional band which is um, known for for obvious reasons as the Movable Feast because it's yeah. not, and it came about because I had a, a a residency in in Manchester when we first moved back, and um, so I was doing every Friday night, and in the in the space of a couple of months, I, I acquired sort of five different bass players who played with me, about four drummers and three different keyboard players. And one night after the gig, because we'd, we'd never have a, we'd never had a name, and somebody came over and said, oh, I love, love the band, what's it called? And I went, well, I'm, uh, my wife said, uh, it's a bit of a movable feast, really, isn't it? Yeah, okay, that'll, that'll yeah, do, yeah. <laughs> that'll yeah. do. So that's what it's been ever since. Uh, but it is difficult, and, and yeah. lots, I mean, the other thing is that, or people of a certain age also have commitments in terms of um, uh, of requiring income, so they have other yeah. things to think about as well. So it is yeah. tricky. But um, no, I, th I think I think I, I, I agree with you as well as being able to do it sort of as a self contained thing. That you can have yeah. a song which can be. Well, that's so, it. You know, we've um, on the album, and um, hmm. there's a song called I've said this a few times now, uh, "The Wrong Side of Sadness." Hmm. When I wrote it, it was supposed to be sort of like a quiet kind of miserable song and and it mm. sounds like a gospel song on the album you know it's got like um mm. you know all this kind of thing it, good. and it's like um it's we play completely different you know um <laughs> another one looking for that american dream that's a band track mm. um which i wrote which is really sort of you're quite poppy um mm. you know indish i suppose in some ways yeah but we just do an acoustic version. So, you know, I, I always say, I've always said this for years. Mm. I've got people, I've got people, I've got people sound like, like Moses, don't I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got friends who, um, you know, who don't like certain artists. Like, I've got a friend who doesn't like Bruce Springsteen. And I said, mm. you know what? If he sat in the same room as you, I picked mm. his guitar up and played mm. you like five or six songs, you just mm. wouldn't, you'd just be blown away, you know? Mm. You know, it's like if you can play a, a song on an acoustic guitar mm. and it, it, the song will come out, you know, Yeah. whether it's a band song or not, you know. Yeah. I tell you one thing I did want to ask you, um, there's a pedal steel player on one of them. One yeah. Of the yeah. Who is it? Depends what track you, you listen to. Oh, there um, are a couple. Because there, there aren't that many pedal steel players around, are there? Um, it's probably Scott Poley. Right, yeah. I know that. Who's... He's a yeah. great guitarist. Yeah, um, nice Yeah, and but John Lawton, who is the owner of Crosstown Studios, who plays mm. everything on the album. Mm. I don't even play guitar on the album. He, he does all my guitars for me. You know. All right. Um, yeah. In fact, I'm gonna get, next album. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do the singer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just get him to send the royalties. Yeah, that's cool. I yeah. understand that. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, he he bought it. I won them um, a lot of sufferings. He bought a pedal steel, mm. um, one of those little or lap steel, I think it's called. A lap steel. Yeah, yeah. He bought one and he loves it because he yeah. got it, and it, it's every track that I've heard from the studio since then has got lap steel on it. You know. <laughs> even if even if it's like a punk song, <laughs> well, it's it's it's, it, it, it's a weird thing because when 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 I came back, um, as I said, we came back to Manchester and I, I recorded a, a six track CD, and um, I, I I did it with a, a pedal steel player, and I'd never played with anybody who played pedal steel before. I'd never yeah. met anybody who played pedal steel, no. and um, I've done four CDs since then, and he, he's been on three of them. But oh, now really? he's now he's he's gone off to London to do. Uh, the last person he was recording with was Laura Marling, so he's um, oh great, yeah, yeah, it's great yeah. Guy, guy called Chris Hillman, CJ Hillman. Yeah, I've, I've um, he works with Rob Vincent. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah unfortunate name though, isn't it? Because there's a, there's another Chris Hillman who was in the band. Well, he's named after him. Oh right, okay. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Oh. It, his his, uh, his his dad's big big music fan. Yeah, and he was named after the birds, man. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's confusing, though, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, there are stories there. Yeah, I know Chris. Well, I'm gonna say no. I know of him. I've yeah, probably he's a well. lovely bloke. He's lovely. Yeah. He works a lot he's with Billy Bragg as well. Yeah. But anyway, I was just disturbing you. We're going to tell us what your next song was, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I need to know as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's that one. <laughs> it's yeah, that one. It's... <laughs> is, is it one of Pippa? Now, I've, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have also been told that every now and then John likes to keep Pippa on her toes by offering her a song to do which she's never heard. <laughs> or never heard of, maybe. I don't know. Is this one of them? Luckily, I have heard it before. So, uh, yeah, oh, we have heard it. I might, I might change the story depending on how it goes. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> is it got a solo in? It has got a solo. I have to ask this. It's a song that we haven't, I've never recorded. So, it's right. a new song. Well, newish. Mm. There's a bit of a story behind it, but I will tell you what it is because it is a spoiler the song. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll probably stop now. And it's not to be taken seriously. All right. You ready, girl? Gone wrong already. Have we? <laughs> you think extra caught it to get into it. <laughs> I've ruined it there. <laughs> G. You know what a G is, don't we? <laughs> Alright, here we go. You make it so easy to say I love you. Crosses my mind most every day. And I wish that we had more time together And your husband's business trips would start again Should this little love affair be over Should we quit while we're ahead before this time it's not that I'm afraid of your husband It's only cause my wife scares me more Infidelity don't come so easy All I know is I miss you every day And I dream of a time when we're together They dream someone will take my wife away Should this little love affair be over Have you had enough? Maybe we should talk It's not that I'm afraid of your husband, oh no It's only cause my wife scares me more Take a break. Should this little love affair 
be over She'll be quit while we're ahead Before this song It's not that I'm afraid Of your husband Oh no It's only Cause my wife Scares me more You should be so slow <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't spoil that song. That was brilliant to hear the the the, the punchline. And it's funny because only the other day I heard a discussion about um, you know the Rupert Holmes song "Escape," the Pina Colada song. No, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know you liked Pina. Oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I know the one. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a huge, massive hit for yeah, Rupert Holmes. I know, yeah. Um, but the, somebody was looking at it and saying, "Well, hang on a minute. Let's get this straight." So this is a guy who's decided he wants to have an affair because his relationship is good, and he discovers that his wife is also wanting to have an affair. Is yeah. that really a happy story? <laughs> <laughs> Which is that's quite an interesting way of looking at it. But because it is, it's, I mean, it's a lovely song. It's beautifully written, beautifully yeah. structured, everything about it. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah. So um, yeah, how did that night? Dare I ask how that came about? <laughs> <laughs> I was in the garden last year. Um, I was sitting with my partner, Lynn's actually. We're not married, but, we're, um, but she's in the other room uh, watching the telly with her son. Um, we were in the garden, and I. what happened was I was supposed to go in the studio with um, a Sunderland Hillbilly band right. and do recordings at the beginning of this year. Uh, but because of COVID, it didn't happen. So I was writing all these country songs, mm. and um, I, I don't know, it just come out. Mm. You know, the phrase is not that I'm afraid of husband. It's only because my wife scares me more. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was funny. Mm. I played it to her. She laughed. Um, so I thought that was a Fine, bad thing. good starting point, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, country music, full of those, it's like the, the, is it the Dan Hicks' Dan Hicks's song, um, How Can I Miss You When You Won't Go Away? Yeah. Which is a, a similar vein, you know. And there's, there's lots of them. Um, uh, what, there's one about I love you more than my dog or something. Anyway. Um so, yeah, how did that come about, the Sunderland Hillbilly Band? <laughs> you know what? I, I was just on Facebook, and mm. um, I, you, you know the way things just pop up on your feed? Yeah. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. It was a trio. They, they actually split up. You're right. That's I asked them to play with me, you know. <laughs> Maybe they've changed the name and, and <laughs> unfriended me, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just um, I saw them, and I thought, wow, that's great, because – I love old country music. I like Kitty mm. Wells and, and people like that, you know, mm. um, Loretta Lynn. All um, oh, right, yeah. So I, I had this idea. I, I thought I'll write all these songs as if they were still alive, you know. Mm. Um, so I've written quite a lot of that kind of, you know, C, F, and G, basically, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, I, I, the idea, I was going to do it, and then I thought, um, because it couldn't happen, I thought, well, you know what, It's I thought it's – I normally – I have a lot of miserable songs. It's quite nice to have something where maybe people can laugh, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's got a good punchline to it. But, yeah. I mean, it, it, do you not think it's a, it's a general thing that people find it easier to write tragedy than they do to write comedy, you know, in terms of songs? Yeah. Um, I, it's a good question, Roland. I, I think um, I can only speak for myself personally, but yeah, yeah. Um, I think happy songs are harder to write for me absolutely yeah yeah um i mean i've written some happy songs and not every song is yeah. a miserable one but um you know i've got a song called good company haven't i which is quite happy and it? it's, it's like a you know you get your glasses and you smash them together you know um mm. it's, well, it's a good drinking song um but i you know sometimes it's it's quite nice to um you know to 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 sort of open your your your, your heart a little bit and sort of put some kind of emotional mm. in the song really you know um i don't know it depends on the song really you know mm. but I, I i do find it easier mm. writing sadder songs than i do happier songs mm. i think most people do most yeah. people I've, I've asked the question to in the last year have said exactly the same thing yeah um I, I I also that... because I, I, I do play the piano i always find that when i'm playing piano songs i always play um, minor chords. Yeah. As on the guitar, I'll just, it's mainly major chords. Mm. So I'll write sort of differently on the piano. Well, I suppose, I yeah. Yeah. I wonder why that should be. 
Because you would have thought that naturally, because if, you, if you're not a piano player, you'd naturally go for white notes. So you'd end up playing in C, but then maybe you naturally playing A minor. Well, if you, if you play, um, I, I, you know, you, you love music, haven't you? Mm. Um, I think C6, is it? It's just every second mm. on the white. That's mm. a lovely, nice sound, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. A minor is another one. That's You don't use the lot of notes. I see the way for the bass notes. Just depends on the the bass note is with if you've got your yeah. CME. Um now we so we, we have I'm taking part in your 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 uh, your your tour tour. Tour, yeah, yeah. Yes. In, so I'm yes. looking forward to that. So what who who where else are you going? Who else are you doing it with? Right. Well um presumably Pippa's we'll with you on a lot of the gigs. Yeah, Pippa's gonna be on all of them, yeah. All right. Um, even the ones I'm not on. <laughs> 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 um yeah, I was fortunate enough to get a um, an arts grant, and um, one of the conditions was to um, was to play live. So mm. I set up a tour, and a few places I've had to hire, and a few places I've been okay to mm. um, to get on. Mm. So it starts on the eighteenth of August in Shrewsbury, and the nineteenth we play um, Worcester. Mm. On the twentieth we play Oxford. On the twenty second we play London. On the 23rd, it's Bath. On the 24th, it's Cambridge. On the 25th, it's Birmingham. On the 20th, is it? Leek. The, yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> 31st, I, Sheffield. And the 1st of September, the last night is in Liverpool. Well, I've got uh, I've got um, Trudy here shouting, me, 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 me. I'm on the tour. She's in Bath. Oh, right, OK. Well, Trudy. <laughs> yeah. I hope she listened to when we were telling her how good she was before. <laughs> well, I don't know. She said she joined in at 20 past seven. I don't think we'd... Uh, no, oh, I think, right. I think it was earlier than that. But it was yeah. all kind, Trudy. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bath's a bit special um, because um, I, I, I actually cocked it up a little bit. Pardon the expression. What I did do was um, I wanted at least two people local to... Um, hmm. To the area because I thought well, no one's going to have heard of me, but maybe if, if other people came from local, they might bring the families or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So there might be some people there. Mm -hmm. um, with Bath, I've ended up with five people on, <laughs> as well as us on the bill, um, which is great. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a festival, it, it, but it's um, it's going to be um, it's going to be really entertaining. But at the same time, because we're on last, I'm going to have to go on first. I, I don't like drinking when I'm right. playing live. I don't know about you, but you're drinking. Yeah, I'm the same. Um, I like drinking yeah. afterwards. As well. <laughs> yeah, I like having one afters, but I'm going to be there for about, well, we're going to be there for about five hours watching all these wonderful musicians without mm. being able to have a drink, you know. Yeah, I think we're going to have mm. to treat it like a festival, like you said. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's a weekend, otherwise you're going to be... <laughs> no, it's, it's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> how, are you, how are you going to structure that for five? Ooh, no, I'll, I'll leave that to you. Um, I think we're all doing half an hour or so, and oh, I started right. with half six, so right. it can be done. We've done <laughs> it in Liverpool loads of times. Yeah. We've done it yesterday, didn't we? Was it yesterday or Sunday? Sunday, yeah. Yeah, we played somewhere on, on Sunday, a festival. Oh, that's a charity gig you were Yeah, we've done a charity yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, so there was just a quick turnaround, you know. Mm. And obviously, we, well, because it's acoustic, and mm. when I say acoustic, it's just a couple of people at the most. There's no big yeah. bands. It, it should be yeah. easy. To, yeah, I've got a drum kit to worry about. about. Yeah. That's, that's the major thing always, isn't it? Yeah. So what's, what's your plan after that? Have you planned beyond that, the, 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 the tour? Um, Tourette? Well, what I, um, I've i got like a few other places that sort of mm. didn't reply straight away. So I mm. ended up with a couple of places in, in October now, <laughs> which um, mm. I'm not trying to think about because I'm not sure where the money's going to come from um, mm. to, to do it. But mm. um, I think... But just see how this goes, really. I mean, mm. I've got Fresh Soul Records, which, which are fantastic. They've been great mm. um, releasing the album. They, they're really lovely people to work with. Mm. Um, and, you know, they've got some names on the label. You know, they've got, like, Grinsley Swartz right. on the label. Awesome. Um, My Darling Clementine. Right. Um, Elvis Costello's brother's on there, um, Ross McManus. Right. So um, they've done a lot of... So I'm, I'm hoping the album might sort of open a few doors mm. um, to a few things, possibly. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I've got other gigs lined up. We've mm. got we've got a band gig in September. We've just got one in. Uh, we just sort of one in December. Mm. Um, 
So you just, you just plod on, don't you? I mean, if you love music, you just do it. Don't you? Whether it's, <laughs> yeah. You just do it. I think that says it all. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think we can get from one more song out of here, can't we? That was okay, that should we do a short one? Oh, Which yeah. one do you want to do, Catherine or Cracks? Um, cracks. Cracks, okay. Um, have you, have you got anything to add to this story, Pepper? You've not said very much. <laughs> what, 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 what can you tell us about John? <laughs> I think you've heard it all, haven't you? <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> and you heard his songwriting in progress at the, the start of the last song, so that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that <is> great. <laughs> um, right, this song is. Um, I don't even know where this one came from. It's like about a dysfunctional family. Um, yeah, again, it's it, I. There's a Nancy Griffith song which mentions Woolworths, and I always loved the idea of her having Woolworths in the song. So I, I nicked that idea and put Woolworths in this song because um, I, I used to love Woolworths. But it's um, yeah. Let's see what you think, anyway. Um, Great. I'm going to plug me thing in again. How do we start this? I think you just start. Do I just start? Okay. <laughs> Anna walks down streets and avenues Figuring she had nothing to lose Made her way to the poor Lost her job down at the Woolworth store Too many cigarette breaks and boys who called and One day the till was found sure Mother took the phone call Father drank more booze Hannah wasn't even asked if it was true I guess they thought their little girl Was way beyond rescue Just another crack she had fallen through and I walks down streets and avenues Saying which one she'll choose So what you think I has no Now she sits in a car, out of view The cans look shabby in the old bedroom The house she thought was big, now looks small Many years since they closed the Woolworth store But the sky looks the same as the day she walked Distressed life was and bruised she sees a mother weed in flower beds Father died of booze And it doesn't even know the truth She gave up on their little girl And it gave up on them too Just cracks that people can fall through and a walks down streets and avenues Does it really matter which one you choose? Such a thing as not <laughs> Nearly got it right. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it's been you're still practicing. We're always practicing. I had a great, a great quote a while ago about um, you know you know about musical instruments. It was um, it was a thing on Sky, and it was a ridiculous thing called the guitar, the best guitar player or something like that. And they all these guitarists on are all from playing different sorts of things, and they're trying to compete. But they had George Benson on it, and um, this guy said to George Benson, you know, I I hope that I'll be able to learn something from you as a mentor. And uh, Benson said. Um, 
when I was your age, I met Wes Montgomery, who was my hero. And I said to him, uh, Mr. Montgomery, can, can, can you teach me something? And Wes Montgomery replied, no. And he says, well, why not? He said, because I'm too busy learning the guitar myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant from, from yeah. one of the greats. I thought it was excellent. Yeah. So thank you very much, John and Pippa, for, you, uh, for joining us. It's been yeah. a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to, to seeing you on the at the end of the month. Yeah, 30th, the 30th, yeah. So, right. um, 30th, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. be good. It'll be good. Yeah. And um, I'll, I'll keep plugging it here as well so we get as many people yeah. to come along as possible. Yeah. So in the meantime, thanks again and look okay. after yourselves, guys. Yeah, and cheers. you too, yeah. And thank you very much for having us on. Thank Absolute you. pleasure, mate. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Oh, that was good. That was great. Great fun. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Actually, it's, um, it'll be a good gig, that one. Um, it's a gig I've played a few times before for the, the, the Leap Festival, things like that. So um, any of you in the area, drop in and see us. And that's it from me for this week. Um, I'm just trying to think of what I've got on next week, and I can't remember. Isn't that terrible? See, I get over, overcome with enthusiasm as to who I'm talking to. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, my God. It, da, da, da. No, I've got it written down on my diary either, but it'll be in there somewhere. So I shall be here next Tuesday, as usual, at uh, at 6.30. And um, do come and join us. Um, I'll have somebody with me, and it'll be somebody interesting, I hope. I'm sure it will be me. And uh, in the meantime, look after yourselves and um, stay safe. Okay, take care.